Welcome back. All right, news of the day video for all you fine people for your Monday, April the 17th. Uh, starting off with the Calgary Flames, uh, Brad Tree Living. It was apparently mutually decided that he would not return to the team. He and the team deciding, yeah, that's that's it, that's enough. Um, and with Tree Living and the, it feels like that that Kachuk trade is the one that's going to be focused on a lot here with those extensions for Huberto and Uyghur kicking in this summer. So the new GM is going to have quite the job for themselves trying to get Calgary back above the playoff line and figuring a way to make it all work and stay under the cap. Uh, not, an, not a task that I admire at all. That would not be an easy job. I think Tree Living did well. Um, I think that the moves he made last summer did not pan out very well, and that's why we're in this situation. But generally, when you look at his his resume and you look at all of the years he was general manager in Calgary I think he did pretty darn well uh but yeah that that trade with Florida did not turn out in their favor uh Tanner Janot is now skating with the Tampa Bay Lightning in practice he has been downgraded from week to week to day to day so or I guess upgraded to day to day from week to week because yeah it's playoff time this is when we're going to see guys who have aches and pains and and injuries saying I can play through it and they'll be good to go uh, and that's that's something I've seen a couple of times with if this player tells us that, that he's good to go, he will play. So that's different than during the regular season where they, they do the load management a little bit differently in the NHL, but it's there. And uh, yeah, so Jeannot could very well play early in that series against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, Cam Talbot will not return next season for the Ottawa Senators, Pierre Dorian revealing that today. So they're going to be in the market for another goaltender. Uh, I, I don't know if they need two goaltenders or just the one because the extent of Forsberg's injury and how confident are you with Forsberg bouncing back next year, there are still questions there. This is a team that's going to be expected to be in the playoffs next year. Also, Debrinket hasn't really cleared up what his future plans are. He will let the team know apparently before the draft whether or not he wants to stay in Ottawa long term. The Sens, of course, there were rumors they might move him at the deadline. They didn't. There's the possibility he gets moved at the draft table. Uh, so if Debrinket decides, nope, not enjoying it in Ottawa and I want to go somewhere else, that will likely happen this summer. Uh, he is still a restricted free agent, but he is very close to unrestricted free agency. So it's probably in the best interests of Ottawa if he doesn't want to stick around to make that trade. Uh, but yeah, uh, Debrinket has a couple of months to think things over. And it sounds to me like from what was said in this press conference as well, that DJ Smith will be back behind the bench. He said that Smith has developed the young players well. Uh, the team finished above 500 for the first time in a while, which he also attributed to DJ Smith and his coaching. It does not sound like Dorian's going to make a change behind the bench. So there are Sens fans who are not big fans of DJ Smith that will not be happy with that news. But it, it doesn't look like there's going to be any change behind the bench in, in Ottawa, and, you know, it remains to be seen whether or not they should make that change, but at this point it's not happening. Uh, this was announced on the weekend as well that the funding has been restored to Hockey Canada by the federal government. The federal government pulling that funding. Uh, Hockey Canada, it has been, uh, if you were at the top of the of that corporation, it was kind of the red wedding for, for Hockey Canada. Everybody went and uh, there's a whole new group of people in charge of things, and so they get their funding back. They, they did as much as they can, at least on the surface. We'll see if anything changes in terms of how they do business. That's the, that's the one question mark I have. Will things actually change with Hockey Canada, or will they go back to kind of business as usual? Will they slowly slide into business as usual, or just quickly do that? But hopefully we do see those changes and more transparency from Hockey Canada. Uh, good news for ABS fans. It looks like Makar Manson will be in the lineup for Game 1. There are others who should be in the lineup as well. Uh, Cogliano for one. Having Makar and Manson in the lineup, having a healthy blue line for the Colorado Avalanche, absolutely huge. Uh, that series against Seattle could be a high-scoring series. If that's the case, Kale Makar is the guy on the blue line. Uh, he's been nursing an injury for quite some time now. Uh, he's had some injury issues this year. Here's to hoping for a, a nice long health, a nice long period of good health for uh, Kale McCarr. Uh, John Klingberg 
may very well not play in Game 1 against Dallas, which would be too bad because Klingberg, of course, was employed by Dallas, and that's one of those interesting storylines, not just the fact that you have the former North Stars against the team that's currently playing where the North Stars used to, at least in the same area, not the same building. But, yeah, Klingberg, questionable for Game 1. It's a lower body injury he suffered in practice, so we'll see whether or not he plays. Also, tipping their hand today, Gustafson, uh, the first one off the ice at practice. The first goalie off the ice at practice is often your starter. The backup will stay behind and do extra work with players who are going to be scratched that night. Uh, there's also talk about scratches around the league and who may or may not make those opening night rosters. But it does look like Gustafson is going to be the goaltender for the Minnesota Wild, at least to start the playoffs. Uh, team Canada yesterday, the women's team, the uh, U.S., wins First time they've beaten Canada in a final since 2018. Uh, they won 6-3, Hillary Knight with a hat trick. Uh, they were behind three different times. Team Canada saying afterwards they need to work on being able to hold those leads. But for the U.S. showing that they're they're very good at playing from behind. Um, scoring three times in the final four minutes to make the score a little more lopsided than what it was for most of the game. Uh, all reports showing that this was a, a, a fun game to watch. And again... Uh, the one caveat, of course, with women's hockey is the fact that it seems to always be Canada versus the U.S. in the final. And it's always going to be viewed as kind of a, a regional sport among the ladies until we see uh, other countries getting up there and Finland winning a gold medal or Sweden or Russia, somebody else winning a gold medal other than Canada or the U.S. You need to have some other country jump in. And I'm not sure how long that's going to take. Uh, we've been waiting for that for a while. There's been some improvement in some countries, but it still feels like it's just it's Canada and the U.S. We're just waiting for that, right? So there were apparently 5,000 in attendance for that final in Brampton, Ontario. So hopefully everybody that attended had a good time. There you go. Your news of the day for your Monday. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Who do you think ends up replacing Brad Tree Living atop the organization in Calgary? And of course, one question being asked as well, Daryl Sutter. Uh, Sutter has a contract, but does he stick around for this coming season? Be an interesting offseason for Calgary. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. The, the numbers on the channel over the last week have been fantastic. Thank you guys so much for that. Uh, I will talk to you again soon. I shouldn't elbow the board like that.